Okay. Um, I do know that um, uh, this, uh, uh, my intervention and, um, and a short discussion is the only thing, uh, things which separate um, our presence here from lunch. So um, uh, I will be, um, of course, uh, uh, fast and, um, and in my, the presentation, although uh, the presentation goes for, uh, uh, f uh, should be uh, a bit larger, because it goes for uh, four countries, which in um, um, more or less in, in the span of two years uh, run elections, uh, Portugal in June uh, 2011, Spain uh, November 2011, Greece uh, um, held uh, two uh, in May June uh, 2012, and Italy, of course, as uh, 2013. So um, whenever um, that, uh, 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 that um, an analysis as like that um, should be uh, presented, uh, the, the first problem is, okay, what to, uh, what to point at, what to uh, emphasize, and what to, sh uh, on, the, on the contrary, that should be uh, set aside. Um, I would like to um, make a very general presentation on uh, what happened, why and how, uh, particularly uh, looking at uh, what may be called, in very, with very generous terms, uh, some theoretical models. Uh, therefore, I would like to also to make some questions about those th theoretical models and their eventual application to uh, empirical uh, data. We, uh, we were able to gather a four uh, post-electoral um, data set. And then um, um, I, I made an effort, we made an effort, Paulo Segati, uh, Gemma Garcia, Alberto Sanz and myself, uh, we made an effort to uh, trying to uh, show at least some commonalities and some differences that, uh, uh, that those uh, four countries uh, have. Because uh, as I, I will tell you in one minute, uh, uh, the uh, literature, uh, there are many so to speak, uh, general presentations as uh, looking at uh, Southern European as uh, it were a, a single country with uh, no uh, differences um, among those uh, four components, so to speak. And then um, I will finish with uh, one word with some, uh, with some data after the elections, uh, a future at, the, at that moment which is already here and then uh, which is uh, not very op uh, optimistic. When uh, re revisiting the literature, uh, you might find uh, uh, a lot of cliches, a lot of stereotypes about, still, uh, about uh, Southern European countries. I, I imagine that they go back to uh, uh, Banfield and this, uh, uh, the syndrome of moral uh, feminism, uh, but still, uh, and then uh, going through uh, Olmon and Berba, but still there are a lot of uh, references in trying to explain uh, uh, Southern European elections to uh, traditionalism and fatalism, so of course uh, elitism and uh, this uh, leadership uh, which is uh, labeled as uh, charismatic, and then uh, low participation, disaffection with politics, uh, which uh, ends up in this uh, so, uh, so called Southern European exceptionalism. Clientelism, corruption, catechism, particularism, discontent, distrust, and whatnot. Um, which um, I, I would prefer rather go to some uh, theoretical models. The, the baseline, uh, baseline model uh, is set in both uh, in the United States and Europe by Bartels uh, recently um, uh, uh, when researching on uh, the economic uh, effects on political uh, on voting behavior with two uh, different components. Um, whereas in the uh, United States, Americans, he claims, responded uh, in quite ordinary circumstances or behavior or uh, two um, extremely uh, different and difficult uh, uh, challenges because uh, it was there when uh, the, uh, where economic crisis began. In Europe, uh, the Great Recession uh, was uh, solved with uh, voters simply punishing incumbents of uh, every stripe for hard times. Okay, that might be the case, um, uh, and, there, and therefore we have some data, uh, economic uh, data six months uh, before the elections uh, show that uh, unemployment uh, rose, uh, rose, excuse me, uh, from, uh, from uh, the, the uh, sh uh, um, uh, smallest level, which is uh, Portugal or Italy, 10, uh, 10 11, 
up to Spain 2022, uh, now at uh, 27 uh, nowadays, and then the youth uh, unemployment going up to uh, 50 something, which is something uh, terrible. GDP um, in the negative um, from, uh, for uh, Greece and Italy, uh, slightly positive for Portugal and Spain. Inflation uh, going up, particularly in Greece, and the governmental uh, debt going from 130% uh, uh, as percent of the GDP to uh, uh, the minimum is 55, which is not bad for, uh, for Spain. So uh, the lesson was that Bartels put it that um, every election uh, brought a new government. Uh, so incumbents were punished according to the, uh, to the reward punishment model, and therefore they were, um, there, there are right now uh, three coalition governments, I mean majority, majority government in Spain, but the other are coalitions, um, uh, which are the different, uh, different composition of, of course, and the different support. If you want to say, to see some uh, nice, difficult uh, to interpret picture, I, I don't have time to underline the main patterns of um, victory and defeat. Those are the electoral results, which, uh, with extremely different uh, patterns. The uh, most normal, so to speak, are the Portuguese case, in which there were two major parties competing, and then uh, change, um, uh, they change uh, government, but uh, the other parties or coalitions, more or less, stay the same. It's not the case of, uh, of Spanish uh, elections in which the Socialist Party uh, lost 40% of its support, um, but uh, uh, those four a million voters going, nobody knows, but not to the uh, PP. Most of them, of course, were, uh, went to, um, to abstention. But then uh, Greece looked at May, uh, uh, at May uh, the May election, the intermediate election, in which they high, uh, the, uh, may, uh, the highest party got some got less than 20%, and then some uh, kind of re-equilibration in June. And then um, in Italy, as uh, Roberto has put it very clearly, uh, those two coalitions uh, were more or less converted into uh, four big groups, uh, the Black Bean um, uh, movement of uh, Cinque Stelle. And those elections came with um, um, low turnout, with aggregate volatility that uh, went up to uh, 39 points in Italy, but also 42 in, uh, in Greece, but in general, higher uh, volatility than the uh, previous elections, and also with some um, growth in the uh, levels of uh, uh, the effective number of parties, both parliamentary and, uh, and electoral. So the picture is not only uh, related to economics, uh, the picture is something which uh, uh, which is closer uh, related to, uh, my point, to politics. Uh, what happened? Um, there are two conventional answers which go a bit beyond uh, what Bartels uh, uh, established in um, proposing his, her, uh, his uh, baseline. So there are two uh, major models. The retro retrospective voting, uh, by which uh, um, uh, voters uh, sanction or reward punish uh, uh, governments. In that case, it m of course uh, applies because uh, every and all uh, European governments uh, were punished for uh, their poor assessment uh, of, of economy in hard times. But also might be the case that uh, we, it might be the, uh, the model of the swing of the pendulum. So that what voters uh, uh, reward or punish is not only that the economy is in very poor or, uh, position or very, very poor uh, rating or fairing, but also how government uh, was uh, taking, uh, was the perf how uh, government uh, performance uh, is assessed, assessed um, by, um, by both. So it's the competency or accountability uh, model. In that case, we find uh, within that general uh, result of uh, every government uh, being punished, that social democrats were punished in Portugal and Spain, whereas conservatives were uh, punished in uh, Italy uh, and Greece. But then if we look at uh, uh, some of the, uh, and then we, this is uh, now uh, individ uh, individual data, we might see some, uh, some um, uh, different uh, message. For instance, this is uh, the, uh, um, how um, voters assess the, um, the, uh, in the positive, the past and future uh, 
outlook of the economy. So the, um, and then it's divided for each country between the uh, main opposition party and the incumbent uh, before, uh, of course, before the, the election. Here and here and here and here should be the positive evaluations of the economy. And here and here and here and here. So it was close to zero. No one uh, said any positive thing, of course, about the, about the economy. So they were pretty rational. And uh, here uh, is uh, the, uh, the uh, in the past, and here is the future. So there are here the beginning of variations among the countries. So Spain, um, uh, Spanish um, opposition voters uh, were very uh, optimistic about the future, but it's not the case of the Portuguese, uh, not of course of the Greek and neither Berlusconi's um, voters and Monti's, uh, and Monti's voters. There are more. If uh, when um, voters are asked to rate uh, the, um, uh, the performance of the government in economic matters, and uh, then here there are the negative evaluations by vote, and, uh, and uh, in this dichotomous presentation, the main opposition party are the incumbent. Of course, uh, the government is rated uh, extremely poor, by uh, almost 100% in Portugal, 80% in Spain, uh, 19 in Greece, uh, 85, uh, 19 in Italy for uh, as Monti, uh, as Berlusconi, and 60% per, uh, as Monti, because um, Italy, social is different and had this, all this process in two steps. No, that's uh, for the same, um, for a different, uh, of course, outcome. So um, there are some uh, things here, some uh, elements here that might think that uh, there are, might be other factors uh, for trying to explain uh, voting. The first is that um, a big question that um, um, which um, we might say that uh, the Financial Times and the, and the uh, economists uh, are obsessed. To what extent uh, those, um, uh, those um, changes in, um, in governments, those alternations uh, in governments, might lead to a uh, change uh, in policies, for, in preferences uh, for policy, so the so-called policy shifts. Second, and I think it's much more relevant, so I don't have time just to, uh, to mention, to what extent um, economic assessments uh, interact with ideology. Mm, to what extent might happen that there are sectors of voters uh, which are so strong in their ideological positions or um, in countries in, in which there are ideological polarization or a strong ideological conflict, for them there are not uh, or any or almost uh, any electoral elasticity. And third, one might think of leaders uh, being really uh, charismatic leaders in time of crisis. So, what we do, we do have uh, about that. Policy shifts, as measured by preferences for more public social expenses, uh, despite higher taxes, you might see uh, that there is not any change, or any relevant change at all. So people uh, voted, uh, voted to different governments, but um, as, uh, um, they, uh, their preferences more or less uh, state, um, uh, are stable as compared to the, pre, uh, to the previous uh, uh, measurement of their, pref uh, their preferences. Of course, there are some interesting uh, features, for instance, uh, the more or less uh, almost unanimity in Greece and Portugal, and also in Italy, and then not much variation, uh, however, uh, in Spain. Who is responsible for the economic crisis? Um, from uh, the uh, country's government, European Union, the Euro, international economy, and the banks, um, which uh, in, some, in some countries are the champions, like in Spain, for um, receiving the blame. But uh, there are, uh, of course, also the government. If we go to, um, to the responsibility by vote, and then uh, we did this dichotomous uh, a measure, um, you might see that there are uh, differences and then uh, those differences are very, uh, very relevant uh, one. The main common element is the government being blamed, uh, which is uh, something you might expect, but there are uh, all other uh, differences. And now, uh, close to finish, um, how is the left-right self-placement after uh, the elections? Um, big changes. Um, 
Spain more or less continues uh, to have this unimodal uh, distribution, but Greece changed completely uh, uh, its three modes uh, in this big one, and Italy um, got much uh, lower, um, much lower um, uh, shape. But um, the most relevant thing is um, they, uh, how is right now uh, the ideological competition by both in each of the uh, uh, sectors, uh, left, center five, center six, and right. Life is easier, of course, uh, to uh, Spanish parties because uh, uh, Socialist Party dominates uh, uh, left and, 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 and popular Conservative Party dominates right. But look at uh, the competition here uh, for, uh, in the case of Italy, for the center, uh, center voters, which of course might, uh, we might discuss, I don't have time for considering it, uh, them, the, uh, the fl those floating voters, as British um, put it, or same, uh, uh, for, or same for Greece. Um, and uh, about leaders, um, Spain and Italy um, rate extremely low, even uh, their voters, their own voters, uh, uh, rate their leaders in a more or less uh, um, very uh, po less um, closer positions than um, in the other countries. So, for um, the last minute, um, um, I would like to underline um, uh, a question that uh, Pedro Magalhães, the Portuguese political scientist, put it, which is uh, that uh, many of those models, uh, theoretical models, uh, uh, all those three, that, uh, or many other factors, all those uh, three also that I have been uh, pointed at, uh, are uh, um, eventually ignoring this, what he calls the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is, of course, the economic crisis the, in Southern European countries. It is not the usual, the standard economic crisis. It's something which is, goes a bit, a bit uh, um, more uh, beyond. And uh, his uh, conclusion is that uh, in, in, the, in case of the Southern European uh, countries, uh, um, incumbents are being punished much more than he says, more or less, they deserve. Um, look, for instance, um, how are some um, indicators of the climate, so to speak, of the public opinion um, after the, uh, the election? Satisfaction with democracy, and then uh, the green line is uh, uh, Germany, which is more or less the baseline. So as compared with Germany, look at the uh, Southern European countries in their satisfaction with democracy. In confidence in parties, in that case, Germany joins the group. Um, confidence in parliaments. Confidence in the European Union, also, Germany is, uh, is there also. And then the voting intention. Um, I think that um, Hans Peter has uh, underlined the Spanish case in which uh, both parties are extremely uh, uh, in their 30%. Uh, the, the Conservative uh, Party and the governing party now, having, uh, after having uh, lost almost 20% of uh, its electorate, um, but the Spanish uh, Socialist Party not being able to, uh, to catch up, as is the case of Portugal, uh, or is the case also of uh, Greece and some this uh, kind of tie up with uh, Italy. So, but uh, <laughs> good, bad days ahead. Thank you.